If you watch this show, chances are you love vintage toys as much as I do, but it's rare when we talk about toys that we think about the creative process behind them. How a transformer or a megazord clicks and perfectly slots together. Well, there's one toy that even 30 years later, its creativity completely blows my mind, and they're called Mighty Max. So what do you know about these things? Mighty Max. Whether you remember them for their ingenious engineering or the fact that every single little piece had to be put back perfectly in order to close them, there's no doubt that these tiny little play sets weren't something special. They catered to all the sick and twisted and fantasy and sci-fi and adventure tastes of any crazy little 90s kid. It actually seems criminal how perfect of a toy these are. You had this dude, Mighty Max, a little kid with a magic baseball cap that when he turned it around, like my fucking G Stallone in over the top, would find himself in the horror zone, travelling through different environments, each one with their own specific monsters and creatures and zombies, robots and insects. They literally had everything that we loved as kids, all shrunk into one little compact playset that we could take anywhere, and I and everyone else I knew were completely enthralled by them. I also used to think that the particular character, Mighty Max, looked a little bit like me. Which, if I'm honest, probably helped me get immersed in these things even more. Mighty Max, Mighty Max! It's Mighty Max! Welcome to Skull Dungeon. Wow! Mighty Max! Smasher. It still amazes me looking back how perfectly engineered these things are. Every one of them features so much intricate detail with little moving parts and secret compartments. Little hinges everywhere that reveal layers upon layers of madness. Crammed full of crazy characters and monsters that are all shaped in just the right way so that they can perfectly close and keep everything safe and locked inside. Each Mighty Max playset had its own theme, set in its own world or realm, with some kind of monster or creature at the centre of it, with the outside of the playset given as an indication of what we could expect inside. Now even though these are seen as one of the most iconic toys for boys from the 90s, they actually came from a girl's toy. Who remembers Polly Pocket? If you had a sister growing up, chances are she had at least one Polly Pocket playset. I heard that the guy that came up with the idea for these created his daughter a homemade doll's house from a small compact mirror. Toy company Bluebird, then seeing how genius this was and seeing how much of a potential it had to make money, pretty much instantly went into production making the Polly Pocket line. And then when they saw how much potential it had, they were like, oi, we need a boys version. And that's how we got Mighty Max. In my opinion, Mighty Max perfectly bridged the gap between old school monsters like the Mummy and Frankenstein, with more newer stuff like toxic mutant melt monsters, zombie cyborgs and killer robots. They felt loyal to the monsters that we knew and loved, but also felt fresh and new. Now over the years I've owned so many different Mighty Max play sets, but what I've got here today are just some of my favourite ones and some that I feel are the most iconic. So first up we've got this one, Mighty Max Conquers the Palace of Poisons, and this was one of the first that I ever got. It's also one of the earliest released play sets that they did, and you can kind of tell but it takes nothing away from it. I also just wanted to note that I'm not sure which Mighty Max go with which playset. As you can see here, I've got a pile of different Mighty Max. I've got them all over the house and I don't know which ones go with which. But in this we can see him fighting a mummy character. There's also a giant scorpion in this one, which is fucking awesome because what kid doesn't like giant mutant monster scorpions? There's a tomb where the mummy lives. There's all these little dead skeletons carved into the wall, looking like a bunch of explorers that tried to take on the palace of poisons and never quite made it. And the base of the playset's covered in a bunch of intertwined, slivering serpents. Fucking awesome. I love details like this. There's a winding staircase up to the mouth of the snake, which opens, revealing a little treasure trove. And like all Mighty Max playsets, it all closes and combines back into a single compact piece. Pure playset perfection. This one's another banger, and check the name of it. Mighty Max liquidates the ice aliens. This one comes with three identical alien heads that you can all interchange and put on the alien body. One of them even sticks out of the mouth like an alien xenomorph tongue. It also comes with this weird robot with a human head. 
And although this one doesn't really come with any secret passages or moving parts, he's definitely still one of my favourites out of the entire series. This is another one of the original OG ones I had as a kid. Mighty Max trapped by Arachnoid. So as you can see from the outside, it looks like one giant spider. But then when you open it up, you'll see that the legs are actually attached to a smaller spider that lives inside, giving you a whole separate monster toy to play with. It's got dope colours in this one. I love the black and the grey, and then the pastel purple, green and turquoise. We've got this mixture of stone dungeon steps with these prisons with skeleton hands reaching out for people that have died inside. Combined with bio-organic arachnid insides and then that's mixed with like futuristic computer technology. I love it. So if we've got a dope spider, it also makes sense that we have a fly as well. Check this one. Mighty Max squishes fly. Now this one features a much more unique opening and closing mechanism. From the outside it just looks like one big dirty fly, but then you open it up from the thorax to reveal the wings and the legs are both made up from two completely separate creatures. This one's also going for that insect slash cyborg bioengineered vibe. I love these layers of the flies insides with little humans trapped behind them. My favourite part of this playset though has to be this little surveillance room. It's almost like the creature that lives inside the fly sits here watching everything that's going on via the fly's compound eye. Another one that's super unique, if not the most unique of all these playsets, is this one. Mighty Max Sinks Nautilus. Who knows what a Nautilus is? I fucking love these creatures. They've been around since prehistoric times. They're the same creature that Captain Nemo named his submarine after. That's when you know they're fucking awesome. Also, like the arachnid and the fly, this one appears like one whole creature that opens up revealing the world inside. This one's definitely something special. Just the colours alone are fucking beautiful. You've got the neon pinks and greens with the metallic green and the purple. You mix that with a crazy creature and a swamp monster and you've got a perfect combination. This is a banger of a Mighty Max playset right here. And if we're talking about water themed Mighty Max, then we've got to talk about this one. Mighty Max caught by the man eater. This is by far one of the coolest Mighty Max playsets ever. You've got a shark that's covered in cuts and scars. He's got ropes and hooks attached to him like some big fucking Moby Dick Megalodon that nobody could ever catch. He's got these blood drenched teeth that make him look like the last thing that you'd ever want to come into contact with if you was out in the ocean. He looks fucking awesome and you open up his mouth and he's just as cool on the inside. This is another awesome example of how detailed these things are. There's not an inch of this playset that hasn't got some crazy little details etched into it. Literally, not a single part of this toy went unsculpted. And that's why you could come back to these things time and time again and always discover new little things that you didn't notice before. Then we've got this one, which is a lot earlier, the Skull Dungeon. And in terms of theme, it feels like a complete polar opposite. This one's really going for them old school Universal Monsters Frankenstein vibes. You've got this mad scientist dude, and then you've got his monster on a bed that raises up and down. You can move the electrical pylons around the playset. There's trapdoors, the secret passages, levers you can pull. This whole thing to me just feels like a Universal Monsters Halloween classic. Now this right here is one that I've always loved. Mighty Max terminates Wolf Ship. I love the fact that the wolf looks like it's made from organic moon rock and then you open up the ship and it's got xenomorph style aliens inside. There's also an escape pod kind of drop ship that fits in the front of the ship that makes up the wolf's teeth when it closes. This again is a complete clash of styles with the previous one that we saw but it all works, it all blends together into the same Mighty Max aesthetic. Now a couple of weeks ago I released a documentary on minifigures called Toys That Your Parents Threw Away. I was tempted to call this one, Toys That Your Parents Sucked Up With A Vacuum Cleaner, and this is why. Hiya, I'm Theo's mum, and he's asked me to tell you about a traumatic experience that happened. Theo had been playing with his Mighty Max toys all over the front room, he loved his action figures. He tidied them all up, and then later I was over him. And that's when it happened, I saw it, and I just weren't quick enough, it was like as if it was happening in slow motion. I only went and hoovered one of his Mighty Max figures up. I quickly turned the hoover off, emptied it all out, searched for all that muck and dust and bits and bobs. He had gone. He had gone forever. The worst part of this experience was telling Theo, climbing up the stairs, knocking on his bedroom door saying, Theo, I've hoovered one of your Mighty Max figures up. 
I'm so sorry. As you can tell, my mom either never got over it or she's just incredibly dramatic. But this is the piece that she hoovered up, this little bridge, and this is the playset that it's from. As a kid, we always want to grow up and become an adult, and then when we are an adult, we wish that we could go back to being a kid. But one of the silver linings of being all grown up is that toys that your parents hoovered up as a kid, you can now buy again as an adult all these years later. I even found this random picture of me dressed as Spider-Man playing with it when I'm like four years old. Look at me, so innocent, so unaware that my mum were going to come along with a vacuum any minute and just fucking over it up. Now, as you probably already know, there's so many different Mighty Max playsets. It'd take a feature length video to properly cover all of them. But before we wrap this up, there's a few more that I want to show you. Check this guy. Mighty Max tangles with the Ape King. Obviously inspired by King Kong, and you don't know that I love giant gorillas. From the outside, he's got these evil red bloodshot eyes, and when you open up the playset, they turn into giant skulls on spikes. Lots of dead mangled corpses in this one, including one that's squashed right under the gorilla's foot. You've got another one here that's been taken by a cobra. You've got a cannibal cooking pot with boiling skeletons inside. You've got human heads on spikes. Definitely on some cannibal holocaust vibes, this one. Another one that's on them Lost World vibes is this one here. Mighty Max grapples the battle cat. And this one sets Mighty Max in a lost world with mammoths and cavemen. Check this little green guy with a bloody rock raised above his head, ready to cave Mighty Max's little skull in. It's got this weird purple spine that you can raise to create some kind of bridge. Always felt a lot like the monster in my pockets dinosaurs, this one. Very reminiscent of those vibes. Another one that's up there with the most unique of Mighty Max is this one. Mighty Max crushes the hand. Rather than being a head or a face or an insect or an animal, this one is actually a zombie hand. Straight out of Return of the Living Dead, this one. And check that gangster ring. This one goes for a classic horror graveyard style setting. It's full of zombies and ghouls and living dead. From the outside looking in, we can see exposed flesh and muscle and tendons. Then when we open the playset up, they become twisted trees and branches. The index finger splits open and turns into a monster with big teeth and a slavering tongue. So the final Doom Zone playset I want to show you is this guy. Mighty Max Bite Cyber Skull. Bites like Megabytes. B-Y-T-E-S. Now this one is without doubt my favourite Mighty Max playset. Right down to the fact that the M&M logo on the front of this one is in black and gold rather than red and gold. Straight away making it feel unique and awesome. To me, this one mixes all the best vibes. It's a cyborg skull looking like something from Skeleton Warriors. It mixes horror and sci-fi, two of my favourite aesthetics. Combine that with an animated skeleton that looks like he's been infected with a space virus and you've got a winning combination right there. You can even play with this one from the outside, removing and transforming the optical targeting system on the skeleton's eyes. And then there's so much going on inside. We've got moving parts, we've got a removable spaceship, a little floating brain, and then check this guy, the villain. Some weird mutant that looks like an amalgamation of machinery and computer parts in dope neon colours. I love this guy. So even though the whole point of Mighty Max is that it's a toy that you can fit inside your pocket, there were a couple of occasions where they completely threw that concept out of the window and we were introduced to these super playsets. So check this guy, Magus. Mighty Max blasts Magus. Giant robot lava machine. This guy's a fucking dude. He's bigger than any Doom Zone playset and because they were working at this scale, they could afford to cram every little inch with details, characters and vehicles. One of his hands is a giant claw. You open up his arm and that becomes a monster all of its own. His other arm opens up and fires a projectile molten rock grappling hook. Both his legs open up hiding smaller characters inside and then his entire body breaks apart and turns him into a battle fortress. I absolutely fucking love this guy, and I think when they were creating it, and they were designing it and sculpting it, it would have been easy to make certain parts of this figure look the same. But every single nook and cranny of this thing is sculpted with fine details. The face on it is gnarly, the physique looks chunky and powerful, the engineering of how it all clicks together is unbelievable. This Magus and all the other toys that came out around the same time would have been completely sculpted by hand. 
So personally, I just think this is a testament to how skillful the craftsmanship was back then. And finally, we've got what I think is the biggest and best and most impressive and most inventive, most unique and by far the largest Mighty Max playset of them all. Mighty Max Skull Mountain. This thing is outstanding, it's nothing short of magnificent and the box art is by far one of my favourite painted toy packages of all time. We all collect toys for different reasons, but one of my main reasons is because I love art. I love sculpting, I love painting, and I love monsters and cool shit. And being an artist, I aspire to one day be able to create something this fucking impressive. There's so much going on inside this one. There's a two-headed dragon, there's trapdoors, there's a skelevator, there's a deadly giant crab and a ferocious skeleturtle. We've got the evil Skull Master, the Warmonger, and the Rock Monster. We've got a mechanical hammerhead submarine. There's a rotating slimy tongue bridge and a projectile escape pod rocket ship. You can even shoot fireballs and meteorites out of the Skull Mountain's eye sockets. This is a playset that had everything. It went completely above and beyond in every way. And it holds up now as not only one of the greatest toys of the 90s, but in my opinion, one of the greatest toys of all time. Now like any toy that's ever been popular ever, it wasn't long before other companies saw dollar signs and wanted to create their own version of it. So everyone from Marvel, to DC, to Godzilla, to Ninja Turtles, all jumped on the miniature portable playset hype. My favourites though are the knockoff versions of Mighty Max, the knockoff dollar store companies that created their own playsets. So I have got a couple of honourable mentions before we wrap this thing up. So first off, check this guy, Methy Max, with a fucking huge head. As a kid I thought I looked like Mighty Max, looking back I probably looked a lot more like this guy. He's even got a little mullet hairstyle like me. <laughs> Methy Max. He's actually called Sammy Steel. He's from a series of playsets called Sammy Steel vs. the Micro Mob, another knockoff Poundland bootleg dollar store classic. Now, these figures are from the same set. These came in the same fucking playset. Check the size difference. Now, Sammy Steel and the Micro Mob was made by Imperial Toys, and although I don't have any of the complete playsets, a quick Google search will show you just how fucking funny some of these are. These are another absolute banger, Galaxy War by Hinstar. Now these proper make me laugh. When you open them up, there's a lift that moves up and down, and other than that, they do absolutely nothing. They come with these single plastic miniature robots, which are fucking awesome, but most of them are so big that they don't even fit inside the lift. They also have chairs inside, but none of the robot's legs bend or have any way of sitting down in them. Now finally we've got these, Mini Pocket Beasts. Now these are really similar to the Mighty Max Shrunken Heads. The ones that have got a monster inside but it's actually sculpted in as part of the actual mould. Only with these you get two in a pack and they come with a super raccoon. On the back of the card there's some direct comparisons to stuff that Mighty Max had released. We've got a Cyclops, we've got a rat, we've got a snake. Yo what the fuck is that thing? Two headed mutant sunflower Siamese twins. The artwork on this thing is also fucking awesome. It's chaotic, it's all over the place with no coordination, but it's fucking bad boy. Check that, cool as shit. It always makes me wonder what was going on at the factories where they made these things. Who okayed this shit? There's not even the logo of the company that made it, it's literally just made in China. Now the final thing that I wanted to talk about is this bad boy. Check this, this is the Mummy King. This is an unproduced Mighty Max toy that never came out. You see, there was a final series of Mighty Max figures that never got released, and this was one of them. Now, a couple of years ago, completely by random, one of these unfinished playsets turned up on eBay, and it was purchased by my friend Brian at Last Resort Toys. But it weren't an easy thing to do. He had to go around all the different Mighty Max groups on Facebook and tell everybody, please don't bid on this thing. You see, at that point, it was just a broken down prototype. It had parts missing. It was incomplete. But Brian has a background in special movie effects, and he knew that if he got it, he could create all the pieces again, re-sculpt it, put it back together how it's supposed to be. From there, he could mould it and give everybody else a chance to buy their own Mighty Max Mummy King. And judging by the pictures that he put up on his Instagram, it came out fucking awesome. 
You see, this guy's a huge Mighty Max fan. He's even got some of the original artwork from the cards. So soon, I'm going to get him on our podcast and we're going to talk all about this toy and all the other cool stuff that he's done. But in the meantime, make sure you head over to his Instagram and see what's up with getting yourself a Mummy King. I remember one time when I was in primary school, seeing some smoke rising from behind the brim of a hill. Our playground overlooked fields and forests, and the rumour amongst the kids was that it was the Indians trying to tell us something. The Indians, as in the Native Americans. I have a little chuckle to myself whenever I think back to this memory, thinking that there was genuinely Native American settlements just a couple of miles away from our school. Because what I know now was just a fire off in the distance, is also a prime example of how small your world is when you're a child. This also means that the places that we were familiar with, we were very familiar with, and we could tell you everything about them. I often say when I'm talking about retro stuff on this channel, or I'm showcasing toys, reviewing them and talking about them, that they've been a part of my life as long as my hands and my feet have. And something that's at the forefront of that idea is definitely Mighty Max. As a child, we spend a lot of time in our houses, in our bedrooms, in our gardens, but when you had a Mighty Max playset, you effectively had a whole other little world to hang out in. And because we were kids, we literally nothing else to do. We'd explore every inch of these things. And whenever I look back at these now as an adult, all these years later, they're still just as familiar to me now as they was then. The layouts of these playsets, I know them like the back of my hand. I know them as well as I know the mansion or the police station from Resident Evil, or Grove Street from GTA. These little worlds inside these playsets, I look back at them and I think, shit man, I spent some time there growing up. They were more than just toys. They were places that we'd spent hours growing up. And they were places to me that are as familiar now as anywhere else that I young at as a kid. Mighty Max was one of those toys that you could take out with you. How many times do you remember being a kid in your bedroom playing a game with your toys, getting really invested in the storyline, and then you'd hear, Come on, we've got to go shopping, put your shoes on. And you're like, shit man, no, I'm proper into my game, I'm proper into my storyline. Well, with Mighty Max, you could just close them and take them with you, continue that story on the go. And for that, Mighty Max was awesome. Mighty Max always had your back with that. Overall, from the ideas behind these toys, the sculpting, the creativity, the artwork on the card, everything about them was on point. And even though nowadays a kid can play a PlayStation game and play an open world RPG, never have to leave his bedroom and explore hours and hours of crazy fantasy worlds. Because of awesome toy designers in the 90s and creatives and story writers and engineers, we always had these awesome little places to explore. We always had them right there in our hand, right there in our Mighty Max. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to our channel. I'd also love to hear what your favourite Mighty Max playset was, so feel free to chop it up with me down below in the comments section. Now if you enjoy Slime House, you probably enjoy the music that you hear on this show. Well it's all composed by my friend Occam's Laser, so make sure you head over to his band camp and check out some Synthwave bangers. Show him some love, show him some support, he's got a new album out now called New Blood Part 2 and it's absolute fire. I also want to shout out my friend Ryan over at Rise Toys and Stuff on Instagram because without him this episode would not have been possible. So make sure you head over to Instagram and give him a follow as well. Once again, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this. Thank you for supporting Slimehouse and we'll catch you next time right here on Slimehouse TV. 